create something really cool around him. Yeah, we'll see. I Are they a tournament team again for you next year? Are they pretty much a lock for you? Not a lock. I think that it's going to be more or less the same thing where they were a 10 mm-hmm. or 11 seed, but they'll be they'll be frisky yet again. I mean, I need their offense to be about 75% more watchable than it was last year because it was a disgusting affair. Uh, to quote Joe Buck, a disgusting act um, as everybody not named Tyrese Hunter was fake mm-hmm. mooning the camera. Um, so, But the defense is going to be stout yet again. I'm not going to be shocked by that. Uh, but yeah, I think like 10, 11 seed, they'll be sort of right in that same range. Uh, it'll be kind of hard, frankly, for them to top act one, but act two should be interesting in a very new and fun way. I like it. I like it. Uh, who is our Kim Palm uh, season review this week? It is North Carolina. Ooh, I've heard about, have you heard about them? Have you seen about, have you heard about this? Uh, yeah. Good. Uh, they went to the national title last year. This upstart group, uh, the Tar Heels, I believe is what they're called. Yes. New, new team that nobody has heard of in college sports. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, they were, it, it's an interesting team to assess because at the start of the tournament per Ken's mm-hmm. rankings, they had a 0.4% chance of making the title game. Mm-hmm. Uh, success for them would have been like making, I mean, and really at the time, I think everybody viewed it as this, if they made the sweet 16, the entire season was a success because hmm. for a large, large portion of the season, they were garbage on defense. I mean, mm-hmm. prior to Tennessee getting out of the mud, Tennessee scored 89 on them and it did not look like it was difficult at all. That was the type of defense they had. Uh, and they seemed to write the ship a bit towards the back end of the year. Uh, but it really kind of started to flip, you know, in January, they lost by 22 in the road to Wake Forest. They were 12 and six, four and three in the ACC. And then the rest of the way, including the NCAA tournament, they went 17 and four. Mm. They got a lot better at hunting their shots on offense. They completely owned the defensive boards, number two nationally in defensive rebounding percentage, never fouled. Mm-hmm. And for better or for worse, they really locked in on having a five with an occasional six, mm-hmm. and they rode that starting five for all it was worth. Uh, I mean, you think back to that national title game against Kansas where, you know, six guys uh, played 198 of the possible 200 minutes. Mm-hmm. Justin McCoy made like a spot cameo, but you had like Puff Johnson out there literally puking on the floor and then just still playing. Mm -hmm. You had Armando Baycott's knee uh, getting shredded and then just still playing. You had guys Mm -hmm. who were taking like concussion level hits and still playing. They were like, it was strange to call them an underdog because it's North Carolina, but you just could not kill them no matter what you did. I mean, they could have been down and out so many times, blowing the 25 point lead to Baylor, which everybody Mm -hmm. seems to have forgotten about. They trailed to UCLA with two minutes left. They trailed for a significant amount of the game against Duke. And then they Mm -hmm. blew the 15-point lead to Kansas. uh, And it looked like they were dead in the water with 10 minutes left and then just never went away. Could Mm -hmm. have sent it to overtime with one made three. I mean, they were such a fascinating team. And this is why, you know, I kind of joked about it after the, the tournament ended, but Hubert Davis really should have considered retirement because it's like, how do you top that act? Mm -hmm. How do you top going in as an eight seed, getting literally within one made shot of the national title, Mm -hmm. ending your rival's career twice, really ending it at home and Mm -hmm. then ending it in the the final four. Uh, It's, I don't understand how they can possibly talk. I know like, yes, they could win the title, but on just a basic level, how do you top all of that in the second act? It just seems like, and I understand like we're sort of hyping them up to be this team. I I feel like, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, everybody's poll more or less is like Gonzaga one, North Carolina two, Mm -hmm. or they, or flipped North Carolina one, Gonzaga two. And I get that. I understand Mm -hmm. the hype and potential there, but North Carolina enter the NCAA tournament 30th in Ken Palm. And I feel like we just did this exact thing with UCLA last year, where UCLA was like, fine, 
good, probably underrated heading into the tournament. And then they just got hot at the right time. And everybody was like, oh, yeah, UCLA number two in the nation entering the next season. Mm. And then UCLA was a four seed who lost in the Sweet 16 and never really looked like a top five team at any point. Have we are we kind of at that point with UNC? Do you feel where it's like the yes, they're going to be good, but do is there this potential of overhype where it's going to just be nigh impossible to top that first act? I think it just depends on how what lens you view success through, where it's like with the continuity and what they're bringing back. I think a sweet 16 at bare minimum should be expected, but then yeah. we know how it goes. Like, once you're in that. Like, we'll see. Like, it's just gonna be really hard to run the gauntlet all over. But if they're a Sweet 16 team, they're there. Last year, they were, I think, 18 and 35th and all adjusted offense and adjusted defense. Like, if you're a little bit more consistent, um, if you build up that continuity and you use that to your advantage, where with the portal and everything else, like, they have an advantage that a lot of programs around the country would kill to have. Um, I think their defense should be better. I think we look at that. I'm curious if the tempo is still as fast as they played last year, which is kind of interesting because a lot of teams like when you have a Baycott and like their legs just kind of going out from under them, especially in that championship game. I wonder if they prioritize a slower style next year um, Mm -hmm. to kind of save themselves. But I I think it just really comes down to what you look at as success is like, do you expect championship or bust? then yeah, that's probably going to be underwhelming because it's just really, really hard to win a national title. <laughs> but if you're a con- like if you're an older team with a lot of continuity and a good head coach and a good rotation, then GG or no GG, like this should be a sweet 16 team at the very least. And I think that's the goal is to get there. You win your, fr- you w- get out of opening weekend and then just see what happens the rest of the way. And I think that's kind of, I mean, Tennessee fans have been dying for that for years. Like that's all you want to do is get out of opening weekend and then we'll see what happens. Like then it's just all fool's money, fool's gold. And I, I think that's what you should look at it. If you're a North Carolina fan, anything less is not, is like, man, that's a bummer. We should not have lost in round of 32 or 64. Like that should not have happened. Um, That's like a Kentucky type deal for me. And and honestly, UCLA wouldn't be a terrible cop just Mm. because like, at least in terms of results, like UCLA still finished 11th in Ken Palm this past right. year. They were really good. It just wasn't as magical. Yeah. yeah, they just didn't get the final four again. And that's mm-hmm. okay. I mean, like if North Carolina, I mean, honestly, if North Carolina is just a top 10 team for most of the year and with potential to be top five, that's a really good follow up act and better than pretty much any UNC fan would have guessed, you mm-hmm. know, in January. I agree. I agree. Um, you have an article. I think we end on this. Uh, Mr. Will Warren, you have a new piece that you wrote on the 60 point score. Uh, what can you tell us about it? Uh, so I don't know if people know this. You know, have you heard about this? Whatnot? Mm-hmm. Um, there has not been. And I, it honestly surprised me every time I think about this, given where basketball is headed. Mm-hmm. Nobody has scored 60 points in a division one men's basketball game in 13 and a half years. The last time was January 2009. It was Ryan Tolson at Utah Valley. Mm-hmm. And so given where we've headed sort of as a basketball culture where we've shifted towards offensive friendly, like when I looked at this for the article, NBA scoring has jumped 11% in the last 13 years. College basketball lower, but still 3% more than 13 years ago. But nobody's even really come close. I mean, the highest scoring affair since 2009 was a 55 point game that required three overtimes. Mm. Uh, And so I was just curious, you know, I wanted to find out, you know, why doesn't this happen anymore when people shoot better than ever guards are more Mm. athletic than ever. And frankly, games are closer than ever and there's more scoring. And I talked to Ryan Tolson, the last guy to score 60, it took him four overtimes and he played all 60 minutes, but You know, he had some interesting insight into it where he says, you know, one, he did not know he is the last guy to score 60. I was the first person to tell him that, which is hilarious. I would go around telling everybody that if my Mm -hmm. name was on Wikipedia as the most recent person to do it, everybody would hear about that every day. Hmm. But um, 